Hello, today we're going to, we're back in the A&P lab and we're going to look at the care and use of the, of the compound microscope. This is lab exercise, laboratory exercise number four. I already have a microscope sitting here and I already have a slide on the stage. Okay, I wanted to tell you that I got this microscope out of the microscope cabinet in the back of the room. There's a proper way to carry a microscope and it's always with two hands. There is a handle on the back here where one hand goes and the other hand goes under the base and it's carried by two hands. The cord should be wrapped around the back and it was. So I unwrapped the cord and plugged it in and set it um, as after I set it down. Now this microscope was put up in a proper manner. You will see that the stage is racked all the way down. It won't go any further down than it is right now. The, this is called the revolving nose piece and these are called objectives. This objective is the, is the smallest or the shortest objective and it is um, the, set in place so that you have the most distance between the stage and the objective than any of the other objectives. So this is the proper way to store that microscope so that you don't have any accidents with bumping that one of those longer objectives. Okay, let's go over the parts. Now you have two eyepieces here. They're also called oculars. So you have bioculars and um, they work together and you're seeing sort of in stereoscope as you're looking through those two um, oculars or eyepieces. Okay, one eyepiece is going to have a pointer in it and the other one isn't. So it's always good get in a habit when you're using a microscope. These are adjustable. We all have a little bit different distances between our eyes so the eyepiece or oculars are adjustable so that we get them just right for us. Okay, so get in the habit of always using both eyes when you're looking into the microscope. Okay, so eyepiece or ocular. It is a lens and it has a specific magnification. So one of these, don't do this if you're in the lab because it's against the rule, but I'm going to give this as an example. If you read here, you will see that it says 10x. For this particular microscope, we have a magnification of 10x with the eyepiece or ocular lens. Okay, some microscopes that you might come across may have 15x or 15 times. And so that means that when I, if I were to use this as a magnifying glass, I would be able to magnify the object I was looking at by 10 times. Okay, so we're real fortunate to have 10 times because it's, we're going to have to do a little bit of math and it's always easy to do it when you're multiplying by 10. This is the body tube and the image passes from the stage, what you're looking at, through the objective, through the body tube, to the eyepiece. Okay, this is called the revolving nose piece. And when we're using it, we want to turn it this way. Usually it doesn't really matter. But when you are using the revolving nose piece, did you hear that click? make sure it is clicked and locked into place, okay? If it is not clicked and locked into place, then here's where the light comes from. The light source through the diaphragm, the iris diaphragm with the iris diaphragm lever, and through this um, hole in the stage, through the objective, through the body tube and to your eyes through this eyepiece. So if you have this turned and it's not locked into place, there's nothing, nowhere for that light to travel. So you'll just see darkness or maybe a reflection back and you would have difficulty seeing your object. Okay, so we have a short objective here. Now on this objective, there is going to be a little four that objective, particular objective, magnifies things by four times. Okay, so if, remember this is a compound microscope, so you have two sets of lenses that we're using. To find total magnification for that particular objective, we would multiply four times ten. 
So what would be the total magnification if we were using this objective? 40 times. That is correct. 4 times 10. Now this objective is the shortest one on this particular microscope. It is called the scanning objective. Now some of your some microscopes does not have a scanning objective, but ours do. We have a, a pretty expensive microscope here and a very good one. So scanning objective and the next one is low power. Now the low power objective has magnification of 10. So your eyepiece is 10. We're, we're using two sets of lenses to magnify. So eyepiece is 10 and the objective is 10. So what's the total magnification? Yes, 10 times 10. Just add those zeros, 100. 100 times. So if we're using this objective to focus in on an object, we're seeing it at 100 times its original shape or uh, size. All right, so now this is that one. By the way, this is the low power objective. What was this one? Scanning. We're, we always start when we're focusing in on an object, we always start with the scanning and then go to the higher power. Okay, this is the low power objective. And now let's go to the high power objective. It has, if you can see that, a little 40 on it. So its magnification is 40. So 40 times 10 gives you what magnification? Yes, 400. Add those zeros, 4 times 1, 4 and, and 2 zeros, 400. Okay, now we're going to look at this particular objective. We do not use this in the A&P lab. We, you would, if you ever take microbiology and sometimes in the biology lab when they're doing oil immersion, it, what happens is the oil collects the light and focuses it through this, uh, the beam of light through this objective and it will actually, it has a hundred so it would magnify a thousand times. But for this one to work, you have to have the oil immersion and this tip actually has to touch the oil so there's very little you put a drop of oil on the top of the slide and it has to touch and so there's very little space between this objective and the slide so it's very easy to crunch a slide if you're using the oil immersion objective we don't use that one so I will not ask you anything about the oil immersion objective so if you're ever physically here in the lab you will never use this and if it is locked into place here and you rack that stage up you could break a slide so we don't use this one and if you don't use oil it won't um, you cannot get it into focus it will be blurry you might see something but it would be very blurry it's not worth trying and it wouldn't be a true 100 because the oil helps with that magnification okay let's go through those again this is the scanning objective the low power objective high power we sometimes it's called high dry because we're not using any oil with it so high power and then oil immersion but we don't you don't have to know that one okay because we never use it in the a and p lab revolving nose piece objective on the mechanical stage you have this arm is a slide clip you do not put the slide underneath this holder here some microscopes you put you have a slide clip where you slide the micro the slide under it for this one you have a mechanical arm that holds it in place now the mechanical stage knobs will move the top one moves the stage back and forth and the bottom one moves the slide right and left so your stage needs to stay clean so it can move properly now when you're trying before you ever even turn on the light you should put whatever you're trying to look at through over the opening. Now let's talk about what's happening, the path of light when uh, the, the microscope is working. You have your illuminator 
or your light source goes through underneath here. This is called a condenser. And in the condenser, it has what is called a diaphragm and a diaphragm le lever. A diaphragm is like it works toward the light, the, the shutter lens in an old 35 millimeter camera that opens and closes like that. So as you're working that lever, it adjusts the amount of light coming through the condenser. And also on this particular microscope, you can raise or lower the condenser and that also plays a role in how much light comes through. So your object needs to be, your slide needs to be over that opening above the uh, condenser there. Okay, that's in the center of the stage. Now again, the illuminator or the substage illuminator, light source, or lamp. This is the stage. Now let's look at what's over here. Here is the illuminator switch, the light switch. This particular microscope comes with a dimmer switch so that you can adjust the amount of light coming through the microscope. Now, when we got the, this microscope out, the stage was all the way down. It was on the scanning objective. This is proper. Now to begin to view the slide, we already moved the slide where you see the, the light here. By the way, if the dimmer is turned all the way down, you may not see light coming through. So you need to adjust it, adjust the light. If you know it's turned on, Sometimes those lamps go out, but usually what's happened is it was put up with the dimmer turned all the way down so the light is not coming through. Okay, so just that light so it's not too bright. And it's coming through that object. Now I'm going to start looking through the eyepiece and I'm going to start with the coarse adjustment knob. The larger knob here is the coarse adjustment knob and the smaller knob is the fine adjustment knob. Okay, so coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob. Now watch what happens when I use a coarse adjustment knob. Look how much that slide moves. Now it's good that I'm starting with the scanning objective because I don't want to go real fast and crunch a slide. Okay, so it moves it the largest amount of distance. Okay, so watch when I use the fine adjustment knob. I'm turning and turning that and you can't probably cannot even see that move. So this is for the course adjustment. You get the best adjustment or the best focus that you can with the course adjustment knob and then you take the fine adjustment knob and get it fine focused. Okay, so I'm going to look through the eyepiece and I'm going to bring up that until it's in a course or um, just in focus with the course adjustment knob. Then I use the fine focus knob to fine focus, the fine adjustment knob to fine focus, to clear up the field of view. And I'm going to use the camera in just a minute and show you what I'm looking at. But I just want to go through procedure with you right now. Now what I have on this, this microscope are colored threads. All right. So remember that you use the course adjustment knob. You always start with the scanning objective first, the course adjustment knob, and then you get your best focus with the fine adjustment knob. Now, this particular microscope is pretty expensive. It's called a par focal microscope. It's par focal. That means as it's in focus right now, I can go to low power and I should not have to use that course adjustment knob again. It's already pretty much in focus. That's what par, par focal means. You can go from one objective to the next higher power and not have to do much focusing. So I can look in there and may have to tweak it. Man, it's still in focus. So now I can go to the high power objective and look how close it is to the slide. So I don't want to touch, don't touch the course adjustment knob because it could crunch that slide and so now all I have to do is do this fine adjustment right here and get this into um, focus using the high power objective. Okay, procedure again. 
as you are finished looking at that slide, don't touch the course adjustment knob. You want to turn the revolving nose piece back to the scanning objective and then lower your stage. Okay, take the slide off when you're preparing to uh, put the microscope up. Okay, so um, that is pretty much, let's make sure that we got all our parts. We talked about all the parts and we did. The par focal means that you can go from one objective to the next without having to use the course adjustment knob again because it's already it's staying pretty much in focus. Okay, par focal. We talked about how to figure magnification, total magnification. It was the eyepiece times the magnification of this lens, the objective. The eyepiece lens t 10 times and then it's multiplied by whatever objective we're using. This is scanning, so it's 4. The low power is 10. Hydra is 40. Okay.